Thank you very much for this introduction. It's my honor to be with my colleagues here today. The, uh, I would like to thank the organizers of the Fourth Kuwait Society of Nuclear Medicine uh, meeting for this invitation. Now, uh, the, my lecture is, uh, or my presentation is on total thyroidectomy from the surgical perspective, of course, but I will uh, throw some, shed some light on the incidence and the diagnostic challenges that often face us uh, f physicians on the diagnosis of thyroid cancer, and the core will be on the surgical management, its principles, its complication, and how we can avoid them. And uh, I will conclude with uh, a very short mention on survival and the exceptional cases of thyroid cancers, the medullary and the plastic, and a short note on the future technology. Now, uh, in the past 25 years, there has been uh, an increase in the incidence of thyroid cancers. and. Uh, this increase may be attributed to the uh, improvement in the social standard and economic status in those countries that are doing well, providing their communities with easy access for uh, examination and health care, especially with ultrasound detecting more of these lesions. And the second reason may be more surgeons are doing more thyroids, and the, uh, the practice of surgeons is leaning towards total thyroidectomy with the discovery of more thyroid uh, nodules of malignant nature. Now, uh, fortunately, most of these increments are in the small, well-differentiated papillary uh, cancer. Here in Kuwait, though, we live an epidemic or endemic of colorectal cancer, showing a dramatic rise in the past uh, few years, as well as in the female breast cancer. The same cannot be said about thyroid cancer, which uh, in Kuwait, is estimated range is uh, around five per 100,000 population, uh, mostly affecting the female population, and again, uh, the majority are in the category of well-differentiated. 90% are papillary and follicular, fortunately. And uh, yet there are uh, a divided percentage between various T stages limited to the thyroid gland T1, T2, and those with, uh, with the extension uh, outside the gland. However, 30% uh, of these diagnosed cases in Kuwait are associated with positive uh, lymph nodes. And uh, the diagnosis of thyroid cancer poses a challenge to a surgeon. It may be suggested by the uh, uh, history to differentiate a cancer from uh, other benign entities that have the same presentation, namely a thyroid nodule, and history may uh, suggest uh, the presence uh, or the suspicion of cancer, especially if there is radiation or family history. And the characteristic of the nodule and the presence of pain and voice changes indicating malignant infiltration may also lean the case uh, towards malignancy. Uh, it often relies on the investigation for the diagnosis of uh, thyroid cancer. We surgeons hardly deal with the, uh, the status of function, but rather concentrate on the uh, status of uh, structure using the ultrasound and the fine needle aspiration biopsy. Uh, there was a good talk earlier this day on the signs of malignancy detected by ultrasound, hyperacuity, calcification, the presence of irregular margin, and 
irregular pattern of vascularity, especially if there are lymph node involvement. However, the core uh, and the cornerstone of diagnosis of thyroid cancer is the fine needle aspiration biopsy, which uh, categorizes these uh, cells into benign and diagnostic and determine suspicious of malignancy and further give insight on what to do next in terms of a clinical judgment, either follow up for those benign, uh, repeat for non-diagnostic and uh, maybe surgery for the follicular lesions and definitive staging and surgery for the suspicious or definitely malignant on cytology. Now, the, uh, the application of molecular markers, the BRAF, may add cert- uh, more accuracy to diagnosis in patients with indetermined FNAB, which unfortunately uh, range from 15 to 30 percent. So uh, it will give uh, some uh, guidance on what to do uh, for these patients, whether uh, lobectomy or total thyroidectomy. So we hope that the application of molecular markers for the diagnosis of indefinite uh, cytologies will be soon applied in Kuwait. Now, uh, once the diagnosis is established, it is the duty of the surgeon uh, to uh, study further the structure details by CT scan, which is more sensitive than ultrasound, looking for extracapsular invasion, Uh, presence of organ infiltration or the uh, status of the lymph nodes. The application of MRI or FDG PET scan is not yet well uh, established in the uh, the management of thyroid cancer. Now a CT scan showing extracapsular invasion and uh, infiltration with lymph node metastases. The mainstay for the management of thyroid cancer uh, in its all uh, uh, morphologies is uh, surgery. It's the only curative modality. And uh, in the well-differentiated cancers known for its multicentricity, multiplicity, the tendency for lymph node uh, involvement, and uh, its uh, response to radio, uh, radioisotope, iod- radioiodine, uh, that is commonly used to manage the residues in the post-operative period, and the easiness of follow-up of these patients by thyroglobulin assay in the post-op, the initial operation should really aim to remove the whole thyroid gland and eliminate the first station uh, lymph node as a principle in the management of thyroid cancer, which uh, often spread to uh, the neighboring lymph nodes, mainly the central and the the central lymph node uh, identified as level 6 and maybe extended to level 7 retrosternally and to the lateral uh, neck nodes. So the standard approach in the management of a malignant thyroid nodule is total thyroidectomy and uh, the section of the central group of lymph nodes, the pretracheal and paratracheal group. Now the gland is excised in uh, block. The Vital structures around the gland should be identified and preserved, namely the recurrent laryngeal nerve and the parathyroid gland. Now, uh, should the disease be extended to the lateral uh, neck nodes, level 2, 3, 4, then uh, in addition to the total thyroidectomy and central lymph node dissection, a modified radical lymph node dissection is in order preserving the neurovascular bundle uh, in the neck, the internal jugular uh, veins, and the various uh, uh, nerve complex present in the neck. Now, in cases 
the, the cancer has invaded uh, local organs, mainly the trachea in the case of the thyroid, then in addition to uh, the previous uh, surgical exercise, exigen of these locally invaded organs, whether the recurrent laryngeal nerve or the trachea, becomes a necessity in order to uh, get rid of all of the disease. And this is called the extra radical approach. Now, uh, which, may, which may lead to um, excising the part of the trachea with its uh, reconstruction. Now, uh, it is unfortunate that the operation of total uh, thyroidectomy is associated with uh, significant complication with the collateral damage to the important vital structures, the recurrent laryngeal nerves and the parathyroid glands. And uh, the damage of both is incompatible with the normal well-being. And uh, uh, as a unilateral injury to the recurrent laryngeal nerve lead to um, voice changes, weak voice, that socially and occupationally unacceptable. And uh, furthermore, the bilateral damage of these important nerves may lead to temporary and sometimes permanent tracheostomy. So it is drastic. The, the temporary or permanent recurrent nerve, laryngeal nerve injury following thyroidectomy varies and it's operator dependent, ranging from uh, below one up to uh, more than uh, seven. So uh, the experience of the surgeons matters in these cases and the, uh, those uh, cases dealt in experience or uh, centers that deal with thyroid cancer certainly will have the advantage of uh, reduced chances of recurrent laryngeal nerve injury. Now, uh, the, intra, the introduction of intraoperative nerve monitoring may aid in the identification of the recurrent laryngeal nerve and avoid its... Intraoperative nerve monitoring may aid in reducing the uh, percentage of recurrent la laryngeal nerve injury and uh, may protect the surgeon from any medical legal liability should this unfortunate incident happen. Now, the uh, other complication, which is also uh, uh, drastic and very symptomatic for the patient, is the development of hypocalcemia from uh, parathyroidal devascularization or inadvertent excision. And uh, in these cases, this may be either temporary or permanent. Again, the incidence varies depending on the uh, surgeon experience and the extent of thyroidectomy, whether it's uh, total or subtotal. And it's uh, more frequent, of course, when uh, the thyroidectomy is extended uh, or it is done in a setting of a completion procedure. In those cases with the indetermined biopsy where the surgeon does lobectomy, only to get uh, a surprise histopathologic report of presence of cancer that requires further clearance of the uh, gland leading to the procedure of completion thyroidectomy which is often associated with more complication and better be avoided in all, uh, by all means or chances available. Now how to avoid this uh, complication following total thyroidectomy? Experience matters a lot and uh, the identification of the recurrent laryngeal nerve and the uh, parathyroid gland, the intraoperative monitoring of recurrent laryngeal nerve. If the nerve is injured during the course of thyroidectomy, then it should be repaired. And if a parathyroid is accidentally removed or devascularized, it should be sliced and auto-transplantated in 
an accessible uh, muscle. Now, because of these uh, complications associated with the operation of total thyroidectomy, uh, a lesser procedure is advocated uh, in the form of total lobectomy, especially if your case falls in the low risk group identified as a tumor size uh, of a small caliber, which is limited to one lobe with no lymph node metastases and no extra thyroid extension. Now, the one centimeter is a, a place of argument and maybe the recent recommendation is to increase the diameter uh, uh, indicative for lobectomy up to four, but however, this remains an argument. And the advocates of uh, lobectomy uh, are arguing that it is comparable in survival to total thyroidectomy, has a less rate of major complication, which is of course very important. Uh, nevertheless, uh, it is definite that there is a higher recurrence rate with lobectomy, but fortunately most of these recurrences are salvageable by uh, a completion surgery. Uh, it, it does uh, impart a demand or follow-up, fre more frequent ultrasound than those who had gone under total thyroidectomy. And uh, of course, there is a high rate of suspicion in the mind of the patient and the surgeon, which would lead to more frequent fine needle aspiration biopsy. Now, uh, the survival of thyroid cancer is pending on uh, the morphology, the stage, and the age, and uh, uh, the best is recorded in the well-differentiated papillary uh, follicular, followed by uh, the hertel and uh, uh, medullary, then the anaplastic with an, uh, a survival of almost uh, approaching zero. Uh, it is, uh, the survival is also stage dependent uh, and uh, age constitute a major factor in the uh, survival probability and the prognosis of thyroid cancer. Those, with, uh, those who are younger than 45 years of age uh, fare very well uh, with a, a survival uh, more than 90%. And those who, at my age and, uh, and bigger than the expected survival for them is uh, quite low. Now, the medullary thyroid cancer arises from parafollicular C cells, sporadic in most of the cases, yet familial in 25% as a part of uh, MEN syndromes 2A, 2B, or uh, uh, a familial medullary thyroid cancer. Uh, it is more aggressive than the well-differentiated uh, carcinoma with metastases to central lymph node in 50% and often uh, shows extra thyroidal invasion giving rise to upper aerodigestive tract compression and invasion such as dysphagia and change in voice. Uh, metastases are present in 5% uh, of these cases. Clinically, they uh, have a presentation in addition to the thyroid nodule systemic in nature due to the secretion of calcitonin uh, producing diarrhea and flushing and the presence of other uh, endocrine component in the syndrome leading to Cushing syndrome or fucroma cytoma. Uh, the definitive approach is total thyroidectomy plus central lymph node dissection and again modified uh, lateral neck dissection. Family members should be screened. And uh, in the past, we use uh, serum calcitonin uh, and uh, provocated its uh, a secretion by the pentagastrin or stimulated its secretion by pentagastrin. Nowadays, the availability of molecular markers and retigenes has uh, probably replaced the serum calcitonin in uh, most of the countries. Now, uh, it is uh, the anaplastic thyroid cancer, the undifferentiated component, 
uh, is believed to be uh, an undifferentiation stage of a differentiated thyroid cancer of long standing. It's an extremely aggressive, um, locally invasive, uh, with a uh, distant spread and lymph node spread, with a disease specific uh, mortality approaching almost 100%. Uh, percent. Now, uh, Abdel, uh, uh, yes, one more is, uh, in uh, most of these stages are in uh, most of its stage as uh, four. The treatment possible is only palliative. And uh, uh, I conclude by thanking you for your attention and thanks the uh, panel and the chairman of this session for being so kind and extended few minutes of my time. Thank you very much.